Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 129 at scavengerlife.com. Hi, Ryan. Hi. How are you? So it is now June. Yes. And this is typically a slow month for eBay. Yes. It's like this every single year, and it seems like people complain about it every year. (laughs) I, I know why. And that's okay. I think maybe, too, there could be a lot of people complaining about it or asking about it because they're relatively new to eBay. And I'll give you some good news. The good news is is that if you're complaining that it's slow, it means that your eBay store is not just a hobby for you, that it's a business. Because if you're worried about it being slow, it means you're depending on that uh, money and you're starting to think of it as a business. And that's a good thing. Yes, I agree. I mean, I definitely feel like that. I, I think about that when it's slow and I'm like... I really hope that it picks up because I need to pay my bills. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? and, and, and that's something good to say because if you're thinking of it as an, a business and not just as a hobby, then you can think of it as two ways. Number one is you can think of it like you're running like a flea market, like the guy at the flea market where he just needs to sell enough that day so he can pay uh, to fill up his car and get something to eat. Or you can do it where you're thinking of your business as a whole 12-month business where right. you're thinking of it's it's good some months, it's bad some months, but you know I'm managing my uh, money so that I even it all out. Right. And, and you also want to make sure that you have a buffer from the month before so you know you right. can pay your bills. And you know and that's what we've tried to do since we started in 2008 was that we are not just flipping items for fast cash. Right. I think when we first started, there was some of that. It was like we'd find an item, we'd sell it, we would have some fast cash, and we would buy something. A small thing, yeah. But again, we also didn't know how much our stuff could possibly be worth. So, And when we were first starting out too, we just didn't have the experience of going through season after a season of eBay and learning the ups and downs of a retail business. Because I think that's really good to remember. This isn't just specific for eBay. Right. It's slow everywhere. 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 I mean, if you uh, listen to business news or read about it online, if you go into any brick and uh, mortar store, they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. It's slow right now. Right. Which in a way kind of should make us all feel a little better. There's nothing wrong with your store. Your store right. hasn't been turned off. Right. <laughs> you if you aren't doing anything wrong, I mean, I think we get people email us it's questions like, I haven't sold anything in five days. Yeah. Is there something wrong? You right. Know? I had a woman email me and sent me a link to her store and just asked me, what can I do better? And right. And I basically just told her, her stuff looked great. Yeah. It's just, that's the way it is, you know? It is a scary thing when you haven't sold anything for a full day or more. I mean, it's a Sunday right now at 7 o'clock, and we haven't sold a single thing today. (laughs) 7 o'clock at night. Right, 7 o'clock at night. So, But that seems to be how our days have been. It's going where we've been selling two or three things. Like, I still have hope a couple things are going to get bought tonight, tonight yeah. but this month june i mean we're we'll probably sell about 125 items and that's low for us we normally right. sell about 200 items right luckily some of those have been high dollar items so it's less items but still good money but you know it is tough when you know a whole day goes by and you sold a 120 dollar hat <laughs> right or something so that's what we try and do, or that's what we do now, is that we think of our business like a 12-month business. Like, it's always going to be slow in June. We're good with that. I mean, it'll be slow all a summertime. It's not dead. No, it's not dead. It's not completely dead. But we need to make sure that, you know, we are aware that we can't spend, overspend, or right. spend crazy uh, money. And then when things get crazy good in the holiday a season like they are for every a retail store and some stores even depend on that holiday Mm -hmm. a season the it's christmas a season their their business depends on that because it floats them for the rest of the a year that's why they call it black friday because it puts your company in the black you are no longer in the red so so we actually kind of plan our store and our life around this ups and downs you know so we 
don't mind if we go and travel in the summertime. It's a little slower. It doesn't matter. We enjoy ourselves. And then when holiday season comes, we try and strap down and be here and yeah. work. Well, I mean, the great thing about it being slow is that is the time. Because it's the summertime. That is right before, you know, the holiday buying season and back to school and stuff like that. You should be listing. Yeah, I mean... That is when you should be listing. Exactly. So, you know, something that always makes us feel better about slow days is you just have to take some action and do some listing. Right. And understand that, like, when we list now... It might not sell in the, these next couple of months. It might not make our sales rise. But what happens is it bulks up our store so when holiday a season comes, we're ready to go. Because, you know, there's no way to go. There's no way to uh, ramp up a store in a short period of time. That's right. why we need all this uh, lead time. We can't start till September right. and then hope to fill yeah. up our store with stuff that people are going to buy for it's Christmas time. Right. Do it right now. Right. I mean, there are times during the Christmas, like, holiday season where we will literally make $1,000 in one day. So, you know, I try to think of days like that when I'm, you know, bulking up the store and listing. And let's be clear here. I mean, we have been together, you know, uh, we have been a paycheck from poverty, you know, like they say, where, like, right. you're... If you don't get that, it's money on Friday, you yeah. know, bills are not going to get paid. Yes, we, we have experienced that. We know it's what that's like. And that's one reason why we started an eBay store was we wanted to kind of add extra income and have a way to make our own money so we aren't d- dependent so on So we that. had control over it. But if you're a, a living week to week, though, it means it's you're desperate. Yeah. You know? And I think that's bad to be in if you're running an eBay store because it means you're willing to do fire sales, right. you're willing to sell things, undervalue items, you know, yeah. you're, just, you're so desperate for any kind of uh, of cash at all that I feel like people can undercut themselves. Yes. And that's no different from like the guy at the flea market who I talk about. <laughs> we love these guys. They come to the flea market, they have a carload of stuff and they need to fill, they need to sell that stuff today Today, like they don't want to drive away with any of that stuff so they're willing to sell stuff for a dollar two dollars they need enough to just to fill up their car and eat and god bless those people because we make a living off of them but that's not the kind of business i want to run right i think we like to have some stability and some a buffer from that you know paycheck to paycheck (laughs) yeah feeling right and, you know, and, and so that's part of, you know, thinking of our business as a 12 month, it's business. So when June comes around and it's slow, it's not a surprise. Right. Like, we are freaking out about right. it. You know, we've saved some. It's money from when our store was really hot and heavy. And right. so it gets us through slower times. The other thing is, I think, is uh, around this time, I see people talk about trying to figure out how they can fool eBay. <laughs> To help them sell, it's more things. I guess it's a whole thing of like, how do I get my items higher up in the rankings? Or, you know, they think like that's going to help them sell. And uh, right. I, I think too, again, I get worried when I read stuff like that because I feel like it's that desperation where um, sometimes you just have to be like, there are times where people just don't want to buy anything. Yeah. It's not you. Yeah. It's not me. It's not eBay. I've heard that, I actually heard that recently um, from my mom, where she was like, sales are so slow, I didn't sell things for five days, um, which, yeah, that totally sucks, I hear that, and and she was like, I'm going to go end a bunch of listings and relist them so I'm up top on search, and I was just like, you know what, that is a waste of time, what you should be doing is listing new stuff. <laughs> new stuff, right. Like, to me, trying to game the system is a waste of time. Right. Period. And, and you know, and that's why we always say we like to put the time in, we list it correctly, and when then we let it go. Any more time we put into that, we lose on putting up other more stuff, stuff. You know. I recently went through our very very old listings and tried to bring some prices down, which I never do. 
but it was very slow. Um, Ooh, so you fell I, into I, the trap. I did, but it, but I honestly, I wasn't trying to game the system. I was just trying to be like, let me make sure that this is more at a reasonable price because it's old and I must have priced it too high. And actually, a pair of shoes sold right mm. away. Only one pair of shoes sold, so I don't think it was like a big deal. But and, I was feeling that way, you know. And plus, they only sold for eighteen. Eighteen dollars. I know but, you. You messaged me after that, like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> but you know, I think that I. I think that's my point, and we've actually taken advantage of it. Like, I bought a pair of one hundred and sixty dollar clogs, like a really nice name brand. Wooden sold, by the way. I bought them for $45 with free, free shipping. shipping. So really, I only paid about $35 dollars. for the item itself. And it's because the it's woman had them at a price. She took 25% off, and then she'd make offer. So I made an offer under what the sale price was, and she even took that. So, I mean, I'm happy. <laughs> That's great for me, but this poor it's woman sold something that she should have probably gotten $75 for the, for the, for that pair of clogs but I guess if she needed that uh, money that week, you know, you've got to do it. Well, but. I did that too on a couple items too, just buying stuff for uh I bought a film viewer cuz I bought some film uh super 8 not super 8 8 mm film and I needed a viewer. This guy had $19 free shipping with make offer. Again, I messaged him because I didn't want to give too low of an offer. I messaged him and said, hey, what's the best you would take for this? And he said, I'll take 15. I was like, great, 15, make offer. Free shipping. Free shipping. Right. I mean, that thing's going to cost him between 8 and $9 to ship. He just made no money, but good yeah. goodbye for me. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, and you're actually going to a wedding or both of us are going to a wedding, a wedding and yeah. didn't you buy like it's your whole outfit i and basically bought my whole outfit for like i don't know maybe i shouldn't be saying this <laughs> someone's right. gonna hear it from oh. <laughs> from my family no, uh, they're scavengers oh uh, well i've been buying like i bought a necklace for like five bucks you know a really high quality pair necklace shoes, a pair of I mean, shoes just... for five bucks like so cheap stuff to get in June. <laughs> so I guess as good as a buyer because people are willing to just basically just dump their stuff because yeah. I mean there's no way we could run a business if we were selling stuff and making a five and ten dollar profit yeah, on things. No. So let's be productive. Let's be <laughs> positive. So yeah. like we said, when things are slow like this, this is what we're doing right now. We're thinking of the holidays. Yeah. So every day we wake up and it, it, we think about it's Christmas time. Christmas time is when we sell like over 300 things in a month. Yeah. You know, where we're making over $10,000 sometimes per month. Yes, you know? we have in the past made that much money in the Christmas time. And so that's what we think about. And that's what we're, uh, you know, when we a list, <laughs> that's who's going to buy this stuff. That's the motivation. I'm not a listing and then getting sad because someone doesn't buy it right, right away, away during yeah. the slow month. Yeah. The other thing we do when things are slow is we organize. Yes. Like I've been organizing lately all the stuff we haven't listed yet. I've been going through, pulling out the stuff that's better than the other stuff, you know, putting things into a like piles, trying to figure out my a method of how I'm going to go through all of it, you know. I mean, slow times are good times for, like you said, physical inventory organization. It's good for cleaning. It's good for bookkeeping. Okay, it's June. It's six months into the year. If you haven't started doing your bookkeeping, start doing it now. You'll get six months of bookkeeping done you know, in the slow period. Ryan, I just did my bookkeeping. I now. love that you said that. That's well, I so just good. did. Now, this year with my bookkeeping, I made sure that I do it on the first of the month. Because we were traveling, I wasn't able to do it. So I sat down today and I actually did it on GoDaddy bookkeeping, which I love. So, you know, it's things like that that you're like, be productive in other ways because right. it'll pay off. And you know, it's all going back to the idea of, it's not this desperate, I need a money on Friday business. Right. It's a, we're running a full-time business that we don't want to go on year after year after a year. So when things are slow, we fill in the holes with exactly. things like doing the unglamorous job of bookkeeping. You know? <laughs> it's very unglamorous. Might as well do that now. <laughs> um, the other thing is, and I don't think I need to encourage anyone here about this, but you can scavenge like 
the summertime's always oh, yeah. a good time to yep. be out getting inventory and uh especially if you live in a place where you have a major winter right like if you live in you know north dakota like our friend adam you are not going to have yard sales then so as much as we hate being hoarders and having piles and filling up our house you know now's the time to do it because when it gets too cold you got to have stuff to list for the winter. Yeah, I mean, and that's, again, is thinking ahead. Yeah. Like, it's not, we, like where we are, our flea markets and yard sales probably stop about October-ish or so. Yeah. And then after that, there's like a five-month stretch where there is no anything to buy except at, like, thrift stores and auctions. And auctions so, yeah. you know, now's the time is when we're scavenging Those and making sales. piles. I've got bins of stuff that we will get to, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll get to it now. And some of it we'll just get to in the a winter time. Right. The other thing is, that we do is or and that it, you can do during these slow times is to expand the categories that it, you're currently mm. a selling in. Like take the time. Like if you're into just collectibles or you're just selling shoes why don't you try something new? Experiments. Like, yeah. You know, experiment on something that maybe it you think is cool but haven't had time to, to deal with and do some uh, research and, you know. Yeah. I mean, like a good example of an experiment we've been doing, which we probably talk about all the time, is furniture. And because the summertime people take road trips, they want to see new parts of the country, whatever – um, you know, they're willing to do local pickups. So maybe that's an experiment you want to do in the summertime, you know, list stuff in the early spring and just see, you know, people come take a drive and pick it up. So, And I think s someone told me this. Um, he said, if you spend an hour or two or to it's research something online, you probably know more than about 75% of people yes. on that I item if you read one book on a topic you probably know more than like 90 percent of people on that thing uh -huh. yeah if you read you know two or three books on a topic you probably know more than 99 yeah. percent of people on that thing so i only bring that up because i know it's for us it's been really easy to learn about yes. things and to become kind of quote-unquote experts it doesn't really take that long you know yeah i think that's a really good point because if there are certain things that we try to get interested in and just because it's fun, but also because, you know, it's part of our business. I mean, you really can start spotting things out in the wild better because you're like, oh, I totally know what that is. You know, I would never have known what that was if I hadn't have read that article, read that pamphlet, you know, looked them up on eBay, you know. So research is a very, very... it. it it might seem too easy and too fun researching stuff. <laughs> Sometimes I think that it is, but um, trust me, that comes in handy when you're at an auction, you know, at a flea market. And so it's when things are slow, it's like this now's the time to do that. So then when things get hot and heavy, it, you now have this it's knowledge and can find that stuff. Right. Uh, the other thing we do is to learn to save your uh, money. And I guess what I mean is, so if you're... If it's slow now and if you're kind of freaking out about yeah. it, what we have done is we've learned to know how much money we need to get through slow times. Yes. So I kind of have a sense of how much we need to get through a summertime, June to August. You know, right. I kind of have a number in my mind. So I know when we're making a lot of money during the holiday times, how much to kind of make sure we have as a buffer. And then it makes these times really not that big of a deal. Right. So I think if you're freaking out now, start doing a budget or start figuring out how much you're going to need to get through the next slow period. Because if this is a business, it's for you. It's going to happen the same thing. It's next year. So don't get surprised by it. Go into next year prepared. Exactly. And Jay is the expert at <laughs> making sure that our numbers are <laughs> on track. So thank God for that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, and this doesn't really have anything to do with business, but with just a lifestyle, it's just uh, now it's time to have fun it with like your hobbies or with, uh -huh. just have fun in general, you know? Yeah. I think sometimes uh, as independent workers, it's very easy to overlook taking time off. Now, we just went on a three-week 
in quotes vacation uh part of that was working a lot of it was visiting family and it was fun but it 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 is important for you to go see a movie go out to eat you know like go kayaking on the river like that's something i need to do like you know and Um, we have bees so you know yes. pretty soon we're going to take time to harvest, harvest the, honey the honey of our bees that is a hobby that is one of our hobbies yeah i mean we talk i mean we live in a beautiful place and we talk about uh we have canoes we have and, two kayaks yeah. that we've used like two times <laughs> i would and love hiking, to do hiking it's that. like you know if we ever feel like things are too slow we should just like throw them in the truck and just go for it yeah you know? exactly <laughs> so you know i think it's it's good when you have a little buffer and you have a little bit of savings you don't need a ton of savings to go do something fun like go to a movie or go get a cheap burger you know but you just gotta do that sometimes so you don't get burnt out and then i think the last thing i have is if you have an ebay business and if you feel like you're doing the best that you can and things are slow like this what you can also do is spend time working on another business. So yes. for us right now, you know, eBay's a little bit slow. We're definitely a listing. We are preparing for the holidays. But when it's slow like this, we're actually working on this other house that we bought that we're going to have as a rental. And now's a great time. We're cleaning. fixing it, cleaning it. You know, we're starting to get it's ready to uh, rent this thing. Right. But, you know, we don't waste our time, you know, crying about something hasn't sold today we're just getting on with it you yeah know? yeah exactly uh jay's doing a lot of lawn maintenance over there yeah a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of gardening and you yeah. know and that's also something good for us one reason why we started this other business hoping to make its money on a rental is so when ebay is slow we have another way to make a money. And that actually works for us because people like to rent in the summertime because it's a vacation, vacation. area. So when things are slow on eBay, we're hoping the a rental is really you know hot and heavy. Exactly. So you're kind of like switching. And so you just have to think about in uh, at your own area what might be a good business to do, you know? During the summertime, yeah. exactly. You need an ice cream truck. There you go. Why not? A food so, truck, you know? Exactly, a food truck. You gotta, exactly. But, you know, I I mean, some, I know some people, or I know a lot of people have jobs and they sell eBay on this side, and that's totally cool. Uh, but, you know, if you've jumped in headfirst like uh, we did, you know, we hope that this has helped because these are the things that we've had to think about and do as eBay has become full-time because... I know in the beginning I did have those nights where I would be – I'd wake up in the middle of the night worried because <laughs> yeah. I realized we were depending on, this, on yeah. selling old shoes on the internet yep. to pay our bills. And that's very scary. Yeah. I think also part of it too is I never thought that I would be the kind of person that is like really dependent on that retail cycle um, of being like – the holiday shopping craze, right. you know, like I, I, I was always just like so anti-consumerism anyway that I'm just <laughs> like, who cares? You know, all those people are sheep, you know, right. like, but now it, it, I mean, obviously we, we don't sell like corporate junk, hopefully, but, um, you know, it's interesting to be part of that cycle because it really is a very similar cycle, uh, and it is scary. You're like, wow, we're like them, where we're going to be in the black in November, you know? And and it's really, I think we feel the helplessness like anyone that runs a business can feel. It's right. just where sometimes you can do everything perfectly and just it's nothing happens just because someone's not buying right. something. And yeah. that's just the way it is. Right. But hopefully you have other things in the pipeline that you can be working on and and doing and i think for us the whole point is like we can't live our lives in desperation or fear or worry or unhappiness like that's not why we chose right the scavenging life this life of scavenging and selling online we didn't choose it to be unhappy so i can happily say after selling from 2008 to six eight years now 
I don't really feel that. I feel like we've gotten our business where it kind of hums along for the most part. Yep. We know where to put our energy and our work and, you know, we try experiments. We learn from our its mistakes and, you know, when June it's slow. Yeah, it's slow. It kind of stinks, but... It will get better. I mean, that that's the only thing that helps yeah. me is like... It always picks up. I mean, you'll have those days where you're like, nothing's sold. Oh, my God, our store's over forever. It's not. Right. <laughs> you know, we know it's not. We know we, for six years we know it's not, you know. Yeah. So that's that's the good thing. So hope you enjoy the rest of the slow summer. <laughs> and what you should be doing is listing. Cool. So go list. See ya. Bye.